Hey everybody, it's Party Lee. Welcome you back to a continuation of our story in Suzerain. I hope you all have had a wonderful week behind you. The weekend is right around the corner for some of y'all. The weekend has already begun. You know, theoretically speaking, y'all know what I mean. I hope it's been good though. I hope it's been good. A warm welcome to all of y'all joining in right at the start over here. Jazzy B, Neil W, Sant, Gens, 6X, Lord, Natalie P, Wickles. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? And again, that's that's all y'all who are talking in chat. Of course, there's some of y'all that are lurking right now, and that's all good too. Of course, no matter where you're watching, I hope you're having a wonderful day. The music is indeed so very, very dramatic. Will party offer tea or water or neither? Why not both? Why not both? Why not both? Um, this is, in fact, yes, my first kind of full playthrough. Before I uh, started this live stream, though, or this like live stream series, I played a fair bit of the game, so I know some things that are coming up. I say a fair bit, but like it's not like I went like you know three quarters of the way through. I played like the opening sections and stuff, got an understanding for the tone of the game, uh, and for the fact that I'm going going to really have a good time with the game. Uh, and then I wanted to uh, kind of not know what's coming because I felt like it would be a more entertaining kind of stream situation uh, to be taken by surprise by some of the events over the course of the. Uh, uh, over the course of the episodes, I'm uh, just gonna make a quick adjustment over here because I just realized my uh, this thing this thing should be over here. There we go. There we go. That 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 should line up a bit more nicely with the uh, Suzerain user interface. All right, let's go ahead and dive on in and uh, see if we can't keep things from you know burning down. I suppose not gonna take too long to uh, to to do a recap either. I believe is. Um Things are things are looking pretty all right. This always makes me nervous because it's it's the same a few days later like image and stuff from like a few sessions ago. So I always feel like oh no, did it not save the last time? Even though it automatically saves like constantly. You know I will say one thing. I do wish the game had multiple uh, like save slots or something. I understand the added tension and drama of not having that, uh, but I would you know I wouldn't mind something like how uh, Paradox Games do their Iron Man modes where it's just like, you only have one save, but you have multiple slots, because I would love the option to have a couple different playthroughs going on at the same time, and like trying a few different uh, approaches and whatnot. Um, but anyway, so last session, uh, we saw a good bit of progress last session. Um, we are currently on the cusp of uh, furthering our diplomatic conversations across the board in this part of the world. Uh, I believe a trade deal is on the table with Agnolia and one with Wellen down over here as well. They each have their own demands. Just as a reminder, Agnolia and us, and we, we and Agnolia, Agnolia and our nations have been uh, long-term friends. I don't know if we've been like all weather allies or just fair weather allies, but it seems like the implication is that we have been, you know, all weather allies. And that is something I would like to continue, even though they are seemingly positioning for uh, an adjustment to our current trade agreement that would be more beneficial to them. I'm okay with that because in the past, the trade agreement has been uh, skewed in our favor. It's a little unfair to them. And we know this, our own ministers are like, yeah, we've been a little unfair to them. So. Uh, in the interest of having an ally in the region, uh, and in the interest of trying to create a bit of a coalition of states, if you will, uh, against the threat of Roomberg and against the reliance on the superpowers, I would like to further our relations with Agnolia, uh, and hopefully we're able to come to a sort of mutually beneficial understanding. Uh, down over here, meanwhile, Wellen is a bit of a... I guess they're a bit of a rogue state themselves. Um, they have some troubles of their own, and a lot of those troubles trickle over and across the border, literally in some ways. A big part of our uh, uh, refugee crisis is as a result of what's going on in Wellen. We have a lot of Blutish individuals, that's the name of the, uh, the, uh, the, the culture, I guess the people, and they've sort of been forced across the border to flee the, uh, you know, Questionable, questionable approaches of Wellen, I suppose is the way to put it. And uh, it's starting to create a lot of tension because across the border, the Bluetish people are uh, evidently looking for their own separate independent state. And that sentiment is crossing over uh, the border to our side of the border as well. Uh, so lots of, uh, you know, like there, there's lots of issues there. And a trade agreement with these guys could be lucrative uh, because they need help. Uh, so not only is it lucrative in the sense of, uh, you know, 
there's a lot of potential for like export and stuff like that but there's also the uh, power projection that we can have over here we can potentially directly influence the future of Wellen if we sort of you know so to speak get in bed with them nice and early uh, however the downside to that is that they want to have some pretty authoritarian um like laws or angles uh, be considered acceptable like they, they basically want us to uh to to side with them with what i can only describe as an eradication of the bluish people i don't know i don't know how i feel about that down south meanwhile there's been some talk about uh lesbia as well these guys are ah uh, how should we put this? They used to invest in our nation until we started going through a financial crisis, and then they decided to stop investing, uh, adding fuel to the fire. Well, that makes it sound like it's a good thing. But t taking fuel away from a fire that was dying, the fire of our nation, that is to say, um, when when we kind of like needed them most, they are driven purely by money. And uh, what I'm thinking is if we m find our footing without relying on Lesbia, then they'll, you know, just in their nature, they'll come through and invest in us after the fact rather than chasing uh, the Lesbians. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to lick Lesbian boots, so to speak. Um, please, YouTube, I'm saying Lesbian with a P. Don't demonetize me. Don't pull any of your crazy stuff, please. Thank you. Um, what is this game? asks Laughing Badger. This is a uh, geopolitical simulator where you play the president of a collapsing nation, I think is the politest way to put it, uh, the nation of Swordland. Uh, it is a text-based RPG where you try to manage your cabinet, try to manage your government, try to manage your neighbors, and try to make sure that everything is running smoothly and that your nation is able to recover from a, well, a slew of issues, from economic, um, What's the opposite of prosperity? Um, I know the word, it's slipping my mind right now. But uh, we're, we're going through an economic crisis. We've got a recession on our hands. We have, um, you know, there's like uh, violence between, like there's like uh, hate crimes going on. There's rioting on the streets. There's political violence. There's all kinds of, all kinds of nonsense going on. Um, and we, we are the fourth president of this nation that has been through all kinds of stuff in its past as well, multiple civil wars. And so we're trying to like get it all, you know, working together and, and get things running again before we end up, uh, you know, assassinated or voted out of power. I don't know which one's worse. Ghost Knight official coming through with that super chat right at the beginning of this stream. Hey party, watching with my month and a half old son. Oh, that's adorable. Well, I hope you all are enjoying. I hope your month and a half old son is uh, learning the ropes of taking over the world then. <laughs> That's absolutely adorable. I hope you're having a good time, buddy. And thank you very much for that super chat again. Those super chats and that kind of support really, really helps uh, helps the channel, helps these live streams, keeps them sustainable, and, uh, you know, makes it a lot easier for me to not worry about saying something like licking lesbian boots and YouTube hearing me wrong. <laughs> There we go, taking, taking a chance there. I am doing good, Maxime. Glad you could join in. Ghost of Tsushima. Okay, you know, I. this is another thing the game doesn't do very well, is I can't, like, scroll chat without the map moving over. But hello to all of y'all who joined in just a little bit after um, we kicked the stream off. I apologize for not staying on the ball with that, but I was just doing the quick recap over there. Hopefully everybody caught that. Holden, how's it going? ABK Filming, how's it going, buddy? Glad you can make it today, Sergio LP. Hey, hey, is the war, yeah, war, we're still on the, uh, on the cusp of war with our neighbors up north, indeed. Enough chit-chat, let's have some bureaucratic fun. That sounds, that sounds reasonable. Give me one second here. I just want to say hello to Boris2112, semi-peaceful protests. I suppose that's one way to put it. Garen Kampf 666 austerity. Isn't austerity, like, the measures you take to help recover from a recession? Um, prosperity, I think disparity I saw Natalie say. Disparity, maybe? That sounds, I think that's the word I was going for. Not 100% sure. This guy, uh, auster, you take austerity measures to bounce back from a, from a situation, right? Austerity doesn't have to be economic, but aust austere just means like, like, uh, like, plain or strict if i recall correctly but anyway i will i will continue to keep my eyes out for uh, for suggestion dumpster fire <laughs> i like that one yeah we're trying to recover from this dumpster fire we're trying to put the fire out get all the garbage back in its rightful place found the stream secretly while being in online classes sounds good well i hope you learned something from this stream that uh, maybe you won't learn from those online classes i don't know no no comment no comment all right let's do this 
to, uh, to quote Sant from earlier, enough of chit-chat. Let's have some bureaucratic fun. Let's see what's going on over here. Uh, we did update ourselves with all the news and all the events going on, so it's right on in to the situation at Hullsword, which I believe... Oh, it's a meeting with Chief Justice Orso Hawker. Now, this is the other thing that we're currently working on, it is the uh, reform to our Constitution. Uh, last session, we had a little bit of uh, back and forth with regards to who's interested in what and what kind of changes we have to make. Let's see how that proceeds over the course of today's session. Hopefully, we're able to convince the parties uh, to vote in our favor. Again, there is one party that is basically, unless we, I don't know, it's tough. I don't want to say there's a party that's basically guaranteed to vote in, t in its entirety. But I know for a fact that there's one party that is definitely voting nay uh, on the constitutional reforms, and our own party has a lot of factions within, and we're going to have to try and convince them to vote in favor of this reformation. Ease, how's it going, buddy? Glad you can make it today. Weekend started, I imagine. I will never know how... I'll never get how igniting a fire in a dump is a symbol of protest. Um, is it a symbol of protest, or is it just like flammable material that catches fire easily, and so it is done? And, you know, fires are, are you know, destructive, and there's a whole lot of symbolism there, I suppose. Right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, 30-ish minutes the weekend is starting? Sounds good, buddy, sounds good. Alright, let's see what's going on over here. The administration had been working day and night on the overwhelming amount of issues that were facing the country. The department sent several documents which required my signature so they could start working on the new decisions that were taken. After I signed dozens of them, I closed my eyes to relax for a moment. <laughs> we all know what happens when, uh, when we try to relax. Another long day. Even though I really wished to leave the palace for the day, Lucien had earlier told me that the Chief Justice wanted to speak to me. We planned to meet in my office in 30 minutes. I waited for him, wondering what subject he would raise. <laughs> Poor Whiskey, take a moment to relax. Why not one and two at the same time? Um, I'm going to take a moment to relax. Poor Whiskey, I, I want to be very selective about when I pour Whiskey, because A, I don't want to end up as an alcoholic. I don't want to, like, a dependency. I don't know if that's a thing that can happen in this game, but the number of times it comes up, I certainly feel like it is. So A is that, and, and B is, um, I, I want to avoid this, like, uh, veneer of opulence that has been coming up from time to time. Always whiskey? Ah, you tempt me, ease. Whiskey is this week's tea slash water dilemma. <laughs> I think I think we're gonna I think we're gonna I think we're gonna take a moment to relax. There's plenty of time for whiskey afterwards. Ease, trust me. For here, we're about to have a conversation with a guy that we have to convince to vote in our favor in the Supreme Court. It's gonna take a moment to relax here. Oh my lord, I see a lot of calls for drinking. I'm the president of a nation. I gotta I gotta stay sober at least from you know some time to time, right? Like occasionally. Uh, Herdekaft, funny you should say that about, uh, sorry, Herdekalt, I read that wrong, my apologies. Trash fire is a symbol of 2020, funny you should say that. I don't know if you follow me on Twitter, link is in the description down below, but I actually 3D printed a custom Christmas ornament to, to quote unquote celebrate the year of 2020. Uh, it's just a tradition we have of like doing something, doing like an annual ornament kind of a thing. And uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the 3D printed 2020 dumpster fire was, uh, was a fun project for me to 3D model and print. All right, shots, shots, shots. Oh, God. Remember, the Supreme Court chief is a national conservative. He will make everything to stop the reforms. Yes, exactly. That's kind of why I want to be sober. Kind of why I want to be sober. Keep calm and drink water. You know what? Actually, I'm going to have a quick sip right now. I am already losing my voice. No whiskey here in sober land. Oh, no. <laughs> Can you imagine declaring the nation a dry nation in the middle of all this, like, Horror. Oh, Lord. I waited for him, wondering what subject he would raise. I stretched out my arms and looked out the window. Thousands of shimmering lights here in the whole sword skyline were mesmerizing words. Suddenly, I heard a knock on the door. It was Lucy. Good evening, sir. Good to see you. I always want to be polite to our staff. Good to see you too, sir. I'm sorry that I couldn't explain the situation to you in detail earlier, sir. The Chief Justice insisted on seeing you this evening. I do not know what he has to say, but it will probably be about the new constitution. He will be coming shortly with Judge Mr. Garassi to the meeting. We shouldn't take them lightly. Mr. Garassi, jurist and politician, currently serving 
the Supreme Court as a justice. Um, I want to see what you're likely to be. I mean, I imagine he's very uh, old-fashioned as well, so to speak. Infamous for his obstructionist methods against President Ewald Alfonso and his policies. Now, I don't necessarily mind that because our own policies don't line up with Alfonso either. He was kind of the guy who introduced economic reforms and tried to go a little bit more ultra-capitalist, so to speak. Uh, so I don't mind this on its, like, in that sense. However, obstructionist methods, that makes me a little bit nervous. I have a feeling that we're not going to get along. I have a feeling that we're not going to get along. I think he's here to test the waters. They're here to threaten us to stop the reforms. I think that's most likely, but I don't know if I want to, you know, suggest that. We may be able to cooperate with them. I don't know if that's really an option. Regardless of what they say, I will continue with the new constitution. I feel like that's a steadfast statement. I feel like Lucian, we can, we can, I mean, he's our chief strategist, right? If I can't trust him with that kind of uh, confidence, then who can I trust? Um, I do believe he's here to test the waters as well. Yeah, there's... I'm going to say, regardless of what they say, I will continue with the new constitution. That's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Let's go with it. Of course. Let's stand our ground and not let them antagonize us, sir. We should... There were three knocks at the door. Lucian checked his watch. He looked rather worried. Livia... Uh, why? <laughs> Livia opened the doors. Chief Justice Orso Hawker and Judge Heron Garassi entered the room. Good evening, Mr. President. It's great to see you. Evening. Rude. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be polite to them. Yeah, we don't want to be uh, we don't want to be enemies with everybody that we don't agree with. Obviously, that's not this doesn't help anybody. Get to see you, gentlemen. We have to try and convince them to to support us. Now, again, just as a reminder, we do have one of the members of the Supreme Court. Who believes who will definitely vote in favor of our reforms and she believes that there are two other friends of hers that she can get to vote in favor of the reforms as well so that's three votes out of the six we need the rest we'll need to try and convince these guys are not like important to us necessarily um but we we, we don't want to like antagonize anybody either exactly to quote wickles they can be shitty we'd be nice anyways exactly i would be such a bad dictator i'm too nice I'd be, I'd be the, uh, the, the theoretical benevolent dictator. Yeah. The benevolent dictator that, that can't exist. I think, uh, was it CGP Grey that did a video about how the benevolent dictator can't be a thing? I, I feel like I re remember it in, in that animation style and voice. It was a long time ago, but it's an interesting, uh, watch. You can make them abstain, but they can't support you. I've already tried it. Well, be very careful with, like, spoilers sent. I want to make sure that I don't know what the ends are to these threads, because, uh, like, I like I like not knowing and, and finding out and, and seeing the uh, the end results. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. CK3 says otherwise. Yeah. All right, let's see. Good to see you indeed. Also gestured at the sof sofa in the office. <laughs> I read that as at the Sophia in the office, and I was like, hang on a second. What kind of a meeting is this? <laughs> May I? Now let's have a seat, gentlemen. We all took our seats on two opposite sofas and made ourselves comfortable. How are your first couple of months, Mr. President? I hope you're faring well. Mm, to be honest, it was a rough start. Nope, don't have a bad. No need for pleasantries. Let's just get to the point. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, thank you. It's very busy, but I'm doing good. I don't want to say I'm doing extremely good. No need to worry. That sounds, you know, that sounds, that, that's a, that's a lie, first of all. I'm, I'm busy, but I'm doing good. Uh, that's fair. It will only get busier. Yet I think you're doing a good job so far. Oh, don't butter me up. <laughs> Considering all that's happening around us, with the shootings near the palace and soldiers on our borders. <sighs> it's a troubling time. We appreciate your concerns. So. You probably know why we're here. <laughs> I don't. You're here to bribe me? You're here to stop? No, 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 no. I don't. Well, yeah, I'll play, play, play a little dumb. Let's see. Maybe they're here for something else. Maybe they just want, you know, I don't know, biscuits and tea. B biscuits in the, in the British way, by the way, to any American, North American viewers right now. <laughs> just to be clear. We know you're working on a new constitution. The Supreme Court does not approve of this. With all due respect, the Constitution needs to be updated, sir. I'm sure you're well aware of the public demand and our circumstances. Is that so? 
I see that you're the one who is not aware of our actual circumstances. You want to make a weaker constitution in the midst of problems from both inside and outside. Even if your proposal passes the assembly, I will make sure it will not pass the Supreme Court. That much is clear. Jesus, this guy's like, comes in guns blazing, doesn't he? Guns blazing. You haven't seen the proposal yet? <laughs> Isn't it too soon to be against it? Yeah, a little bit, right? So you came here to threaten us, that's what it feels like. Come on, Mr. Hawker, we can figure something out. We'll get the court too, even if you do not co cooperate. Oh, do I want to like, again, it's like, do I want to antagonize him? Let's do this. Let's call him out. Let's call him out, right? Oh my god, Arthur Shelby, I did not realize... Oh, I didn't realize you were talking about a video game. And I... Oh my lord. I read Firstborn Died and I was like, oh no. Jeez. <laughs> Will there be a people's a vote for constitution? Uh, do you mean like in uh, in game? Like will the people vote? Like a referendum kind of a thing? Uh, the assembly will be voting on it. The assembly needs to get a uh, majority to consider it, a super majority to pass it, and then the Supreme Court needs to have a majority to pass it to the Supreme Court, uh, if I recall it correctly. Ease, I love that you're just trying to like antagonize <laughs> these guys. He can probably have me killed, you know, like like legitimately. I'm genuinely concerned that Orso Hawker might try and have me assassinated. Um <laughs> if if things don't go his well his way. Or if we if we act too aggressively against him. We'll we'll get a bit more aggressive, but let let's let him start pushing our buttons first before we, you know, push them ourselves. Do you think I live under a rock, Mr. President? I know what goes on. Yet you, Mr. President seem to be only partially informed about the current situation. Please, let us explain the reasons of our stance. I believe I'm fully informed about the situation, Mr. Garassi. I am the president of this damn country. <laughs> Kill him first, I like it. <laughs> See that, if that was option number five, I'm not saying I would click it, but I'm not saying I wouldn't. You think you are, Mr. President. But the Chief Justice has some intel on something that you would be very interested in. Well then why not share it without threatening me? I'm not interested in your games, honestly. Ah, God damn, it's good to know. It's good to- <laughs> vote five. Oh man, uh, fine, you know, fine, 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 you know, fine, fine, fine. What would that be? Orso signaled Heron with his hand to let him speak instead. Oh, okay, okay. Mr. President, I know that you're a busy man, so I'll make this quick. You're taking your goddamn time. We all know that Sorter's security forces found stashes of Rumbergian weaponry in the hideouts of Bluter Separatists. KA-74s are roaming inside Swordland at this moment. As much as Rumberg poses a direct threat, now it's clear that they are also intervening in our country and weaponizing our minorities against us. It's not unprecedented to think that the Bloods will start their terror again with their new toys. I'm sorry, I can only read that as the Bloods. <laughs> not, not to mention the fights that broke out between the left and right wing after the shooting of Bernard Circus. Communists are rising with the support of United Contana. The chaos is imminent for Swordland. And sadly, we don't see the administration taking the necessary precautions. You said you will not focus on military during your term under current circumstances that cannot be tolerated at any cost. Yeah, exactly. Let them give me all the information and then I'll decide. Um, also, I know all this stuff. You're wasting my time, Mr. Hawker. The court has no jurisdiction over these matters is also true. Tolerate, you should be more careful with your words of choice. Huh? <laughs> I did promise that, but circumstances have changed. Nope, not a chance. We're taking the necessary steps, no need to worry. No. He's starting to, he's starting to get a little, uh... A little, a little aggressive. Got to, got to take a stand here. He's not exactly wrong. He's not wrong, no. But we've taken all these things into consideration in making all of our decisions. A stick toe head on him? Yeah, might not be a bad idea. Chew is the polite response, but we've been polite. We've been polite. Now he's starting to again. He's talking to the president here. He's saying my decisions cannot be tolerated. That ain't right. Yeah, time to be a little assertive. I think the court has no jurisdiction over these matters. Aren't we all part of this state, Mr. President? We're all responsible if Swordland fails to overcome these threats. Sure, but that's not what jurisdiction means. You know, for a Supreme Court Justice... 
But regardless of that, are you also aware that the armed Bludish Separatists have direct connections with the Workers' Party of Bludia? Um... Uh, I mean, they're all Blutes. Oh my god, that's such a terrible response. Don't get too impatient, keep your pants on. I make no promises. Who's to say they're not already off, Natalie? <laughs> uh, everybody knows that. They claim otherwise. I mean, saying they claim otherwise sounds like a very naive thing to say. Workers' Party is a democratic party unlike the militias. They are not the same. I, I feel like I should insist that they're... Jeez, mm, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this is... Because I don't know this. I've not heard this. I have no reason to believe this, apart from what this guy's saying. Technically, everyone knows that. Do they? Have we seen evidence of... Like, when they're saying direct connections, like, obviously, yes, there are direct connections. They are bluish, so that's a direct connection. But, you know, I don't think that's what he's getting at. I think he's trying to say that there's, like, political influence uh, from these separatists. <laughs> God damn it, he's... <laughs> to me, seems like a bad response. Hmm, okay, let's, let's, let's see here. Workers' Party of Bludia. Do we all know... So some members have claimed that the WF... So some members of our party has claimed that the uh, Workers' Party has direct ties with the Bludish Freedom Front, which was not proven and has been numerously denied by its members. In the 1949... Sorry. In, in the 1949. In 1949, the party put forward its earlier chairman, Mansoon Leek, who won 6% of the vote. Leek then resigned, ran as an independent to bypass the 10% threshold. Party won 9%, barely losing the election. Okay. Um, so that's what we know. Yeah, exactly. Three gives the impression that I'm informed. Um, without villainizing this political party. Crush the separatists. I mean, we're not going to allow them to create a separate state. Don't worry about that. But they are allowed to... If we, if we want to avoid separatism, we have to allow representation, right? Workers' Party is a democratic party, unlike the militias. They're not the same. If you try to crush a separatist movement, if you try to give them no representation, then that's what adds fuel to that fire of separatism. It's like, well, if you're not going to... I mean, to, to quote a famous quote, uh, no taxation without representation, right? It's like, if you're not going to let us, if you're not going to represent us, if you're not going to have our needs and wants and desires be represented, then why should you rule over us? They can't be separatists if they're all dead. Oh, we'll allow them to separate their heads from their bodies. They may claim they have no ties with the separatists, but most of their members used to be part of them before they formed the Workers' Party of Bludia. How about the name, Mr. President? It is not the Workers' Party of Swordland, is it? As far as I'm aware, there's no nation called Bludia around here. Okay, damn it, you know, that's a good point. <laughs> okay. He's got a point there. What is this all about? Yeah, I like Lucian as well. This guy cuts through the crap. You know what? You know what? I like Lucian. Cuts through the BS. Walter can go dive off a cliff. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what what triggered that? I can't. Oh right, right, right. The, the, that's the uh that's the uh Walter Walter Tusk or whatever, right? I was like, "What?" <laughs> Seems oddly aggressive. Nope, perfectly fair. Let's be careful about modern day politics. Keep it out of chat, please. Thank you. Um the history's in the codex. It's rough. Uh the Bluish history? Yeah, yeah. Walter is the LOS guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, why am I? Why do I? Why and why am I so spiteful of him? <laughs> but right, then I remembered who he was, and I was like, right, nope, that adds up. All right, what's this all about? The only reason they're not in the assembly is because of the electoral threshold. They've gotten quite big. They're clearly getting outside help, and their connections to the paramilitary Bluish force cannot be denied. And all of a sudden, the reformists are trying to decrease the electoral threshold so that the Bluish separatists can be legitimized in the assembly to achieve their aims of independence. Man, 10% is not enough to... I mean, I like how his his argument is constructed. Um, like, he's raising, you know, he's raising points that could easily sway somebody who was on the fence. Unfortunately for him, I am not. 
on the fence. Lucian is a homie. <laughs> There we go, it's canonized. <laughs> I always want to click this to get rid of the tab for some reason. Um, you think that's Mr. Richter's intention? I will not allow it to happen. That's too dramatic. Yeah, let's start calling him out. That, that, yeah, ex exactly. He seems a little dramatic. Let's, let, calm down. Calm down, Mr. Hawker. Chill, all right? You want some of the whiskey in this room? Because <laughs> I think you need it. Say what you will, Mr. President. I am stating the obvious. But I wish the only issues were the bluish terrorists in Roomberg. Reformists suggested changes would br also bring the communists, who are backed by United Contana, into the assembly. Do you see the pattern yet? I do see the pattern. More representation for the different voices in the country. That's the pattern. I apologize, gentlemen, but I am not a conspiracy theorist. You're saying the reformists are working for the foreign powers. There's no evidence about any of this. And what is your suggestion? I'm going to straight up call them. There's no evidence about any of this. I, I wish there was an option that was just like, none of this is a problem. These, these, like, these can be problems, yes, if they escalate beyond 10%, you know? Seems a bit paranoid, but let's hear him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either you give them representation or they get it themselves. Yeah, exactly, exactly what I was getting at. It's like, uh, connect us with it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What I was talking about was, um, you know, the, like, the U.S. independence struggle way, way back when. It's just like that the, 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 the well, or at least I think it's the well-known quote, um, you know, no, no, uh, no rep, uh, no taxation without representation. I almost said no representation without taxation, which is, <laughs> uh, maybe the other way around. All right, let's, uh, yeah, there's no evidence about any of this. I could hear him out to your point in chat. Yeah, you crazy, bro. Have a drink. Calm down. There's no evidence about any of this. Time to start putting my foot down. Wasting my time. <laughs> no representation without taxation. Yeah. Uh, haven't you been briefed by your security team? Maybe you should su suspect them as well. Oh, get get out of my office! <laughs> we should take the necessary measures against communists and bluish plots, as well as increasing our military budget against a possible conflict with Bloomberg. My man. What's our, like... Oh, jeez. <laughs> and of course, not fall into the traps of the reformists by listening to their demands. They're clearly plotting to weaken the president and our whole administration in order to exploit the situation. Trying to sow discord, in comes a discord link. Don't hesitate to join our discord, folks. It is a fantastic community, though. The link is in the chat right now. Thank you, Jazzy B. <laughs> um, no, Sam, don't, don't tell me the answers. Don't tell me what the realities are that we don't actually know. Please, please. <laughs> Um, ta -da -ta, which brings us to some very important information that we have. It's definitely something you need to hear, and it can change absolutely everything. And also, if the communists are really backed by United Contana, their 10% representation is still within our borders. The, the, the reality of geopolitics is that, like, there will always be outside influences. And if they take a couple of seats here and there, and they represent the voice of, you know, a, a, a different voice, a different angle, it should allow for a more balanced approach in governance. Esteban, how's it going, buddy? It's been a, been a, been a while since you've uh, joined us in the live stream, eh? Hope life's been treating you all right. Hope you had a good week. How's it going, man? Oh, okay, is it, is it in the, in the, uh, in the new, they receive funds from the east? Yeah, not a surprise there. I guess I'm not surprised there. <laughs> With all due respect, Mr. President, I think this is getting slightly ridiculous. Um, I uh, kind of wish there was a middle ground option. Like, right now, I feel like... I wish there was an option that was like, I agree with you, Lucian, but let's hear him out. You know, that kind of an option. Uh, yeah, no, if it's, if it's already in the codex, then that's fine. Yeah, sorry, I thought, I thought you were telling me something that I find out later. My apologies, Sant. I, I misunderstood the statement there. Uh, <laughs> we batting the commies makes Tobarishi puppy eyes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, dear. Um, <laughs> please explain, Mr. Hawker. Uh, yeah, I feel like saying let the Chief Justice talk is antagonizing Lucian, which I don't want to do. So please explain, Mr. Hawker. Yeah, let's, let's find everything out. What does he got here? 
unless he has like, I don't know. I don't even know. The person in question is Mr. Friends Richter himself, the leader of the reformists. I know who he is. We have enough information to infer that he has ties with Arcasia. Arcasia is aggressively growing their influence around the world, and now we have Mr. Richter coming up with these ridiculous demands for a new constitution amidst a chaotic period in Swordland. Arcasia's, like, so these guys are the capitalist superpower in this world, and the threat they pose to our quote-unquote way of life, more like our way of governance, is not something Mr. Richter's desired reforms have control over. All the pieces seem to fit perfectly. That is why the Supreme Court will be doing what it takes to stop these reforms and preserve the Constitution. Man, y'all, I can't believe you guys are Chief Justices. I, I, you know, I'm calling you a Chief Justice. Justice is clearly not happening. <laughs> How would you know that Mr. Richter has ties to Arcasia? Mr. Galade, we all know he has been in Arcasia many times because it's been documented. But what would you think if he has been making hidden flights to the country? He was hiding his flights to Arcasia? No, I need to know this. Please explain. He has been spotted in a hotel in Arcasia last year, where they held the Conference on Economic Development in Volatile Regions. Right around that time, he started to influence the masses into believing that our constitution is the reason for everything bad. Yeah, that's typically how this works. That's typically how the dissemination of information takes place. Yeah, it's like ex exactly, Sam. Like, I can see... Yeah, 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 no, totally. It's just like, this is entirely reasonable. He goes to a conference where he sees the troubles that were the solution to the troubles that we're facing he comes back and starts talking about like this is completely reasonable oh my god okay these guys are my opinion about orso hawker just went from zero to like negative 10 on a scale of like zero to five you know like dude perfectly reasonable behavior his trip was not documented nor was he an official guest of the conference we believe that he had a meeting with president walker behind closed doors i need to see evidence of this I need to see, like, I, like, he's, he, he's picking at something that, uh, like, there's a loophole here for sure. There's a loophole here for sure. President Party Elite will remember that. Um, let's see. Where is, where is, where is, where is, uh, the Codex? Let's go ahead and take a look at, um, Richter, right? Uh, da, da, da. Richter. Friends, Richter. Come on, he's got friends in the name. How can we not be friends? Um, all right. Before his political career, he studied economics at Lackhaven Business School and worked for the Watchtower of Human Rights in Arcasia. Yeah, he spent a lot of time in Arcasia. He went there last year. What would last year be? We're in, like, the late 30s, right? But in opposition against the majority government of the USP with little gains. But, uh, he was also known as a notable human rights advocate in so Swordland. Like, he's been doing this for a while. Like, it's, it's not new behavior. Friends kept his stance against the government and once infamously called him a puppet of the deep state. Damn. Surprised this guy's still alive. <laughs> Remains as the leader of the opposition against the government in Swordland. But, uh, yeah, it seems entirely reasonable. I mean, this dude's like, he's been to Arcasia. We invest in a company that's Arcasian. It's not a sign of, uh, it's not a sign of trouble. And on the opposite of trouble, we got Classified coming through with a super chat. Thank you very much, buddy. Story time with P.E. dropping the flag in there. I appreciate that greatly, man. As you very well know, that kind of stuff really helps the channel, really helps keep these live streams sustainable as well. Uh, just like stream after stream after stream, the support has been wild. Thank you so very much, buddy. Thank you so very much. Let's see him like continue to spew his like weird conspiracy theories. <laughs> PE has been classified. Holy goddamn. <laughs> uh, I also have a couple more photos of him that were taken in Arcasia in different cities. One is from a couple months back. Again, none of it is documented. Are you spying on members of the... He also attended another event in Lesbia last week. The Arcasian Minister of Foreign Affairs was there too. Okay. How did you find out about this? Oh, damn, which one? Okay, I need to throw up a vote. One or three, because how can any of these be undocumented? I feel like he's just going to spew lies. 
how did you find out about this? I feel like is is uh, is more in, is more in keeping with the answers I want to find. But you know what? I'm curious what you all think. So let's go ahead and get a poll going over here. Give me a quick second, folks, as I set that up. Um, uh, I wish I could alt tab without this window closing. Uh, well, um, so how did you find out? Or uh, how can they be undocumented? with a weird capitalization. Folks, get your votes in. And remember the format, please. Uh, make sure you do exclamation mark, vote, put a space, and then zero or one. Like uh, the format I threw up over there. Uh, so zero or one are the two options. Do not vote based on the numbers you see on on uh, on here. Vote based on the, uh, the the options I described. Zero is how did you find out? One is how can they be undocumented? I'm not going to go with number two at all because that's like uh, sip dr drinking the Kool Aid, right? I'm not I'm not here to drink the Kool Aid. Left or right, it matters not. There are foreign influences. There are foreign influences, but like we have to look clearly. What we're doing hasn't been working, and there are nations around us that are prospering. Prospering? Prospering. That's a word, right? It doesn't sound like a word. Uh, and, and, and if there if there are things to learn from outside, then we should learn and adapt to our way of life and our way of governance and grow for the better. Everything Friends Richter has suggested so far has been... It has been a little much, like as far as the reforms are concerned, but the committee has come together to temper those demands and make it all a bit more reasonable. So I'm okay with how these conversations are going. What I'm not okay with is this nonsense. I definitely want to know what the hell's going on. I feel like these undocumented trips, like he's, like what's what's the what's the play? What's the angle here? How is he claiming these are undocumented? And if they are, that is, that's where it becomes suspicious. But I feel like they're not documented because of like a loophole, like oh yeah, he drove across the border because you can do that, or you know something like that. Um, it's not illegal. No, it's not illegal. To go to a conference and learn and come back and try to help the nation, I'm not against that. I'm not against that at all. I think that's fair. I'm gonna call the uh, the vote over here in just a handful of seconds. Yeah, exactly. If it'll help, if, if it'll help raise the nation. I don't know what we're talking about. I just voted. I have no idea what the game is. PC gaming. This is a text-based uh, role-play geopolitical simulator. I suppose is the way to put it. Um, you are the president of a nation that is going through a lot of crap right now, and you're trying to get it all come, like get it all together, and and run the nation from out of this hell hole that it's in uh, to hopefully a, a prosperous uh, state. All right, voting is done. Could go ahead and call it, and uh, that went just about how I expected it to. How did you find out? Seems to have one. Just slightly, just slightly. Oh, it's a very fun game. It's very cool. Writing is top notch. The uh, the 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 world has been very nicely developed. It's all in a made up uh, made up continent, made up world, made up country. But it's all so thoroughly fleshed out. It's it's great. All right, how do you find out about this? Many solace were already following his leads for quite some time, Mr. President. I cannot give away their identities, but I can give you the evidence. Go on then. He handed me a small file. Psh, it's a small file. Pff, I mean, he's got nothing. He's got nothing. It contained official documents from the Swordish Border Guard with highlighted dates that showed no trace of Franz Richter's name. There were clear photos of him that were taken in the conference in Arcasia, as well as remarks by Lesbian and Arcasian citizens who claimed to have seen him with Arcasian businessmen around the same dates. There was also an official transcript of one of his speeches where he claimed to be in Benfi on the dates of the conference in Arcasia, where he was spotted. Lucian skimmed through the documents with skepticism, which slowly turned into surprise. These seem to be real. Of course they're real, Mr. Galade. These seem to suggest that Arcasia is behind the reformists. Their demands will only benefit Arcasia. They want us to have a weaker administration while we face all these threats. This is clearly a plot against Swordland. I bet Rumberg is, <laughs> oh no, is part of their plan too. This cannot be a coincidence that they are weaponizing our minorities against us around the same time. Now you understand the reasons of our current stance, and also our suspicions about your advisors, who clearly have not given you this vital information. Lucen gave him a sharp look. We appreciate the information, Mr. Hawker. I advise against jumping to conclusions right away. 
we still need to check the information. Exactly. There's not much to think or check. This is clearly an emergency. In such cases, the Constitution gives the President the right to use his emergency powers. If we work together, you can be sure that the Supreme Court will not block your declaration of emergency. <laughs> oh, that escalated pretty goddamn quickly. That escalated pretty goddamn quickly. Uh, it isn't illegal to take photos in a public space, that is correct. Um, though, I mean, this is like straight up espionage. It's not just like photos of a public space. It's certainly, uh, like, it, it, it's the case of like, well, if you go looking for, if you go looking for a specific answer to a question, you will find that answer. You know what I mean? You're not asking a question. You're, you're confirming an answer. There's a term for it. Um, is it, is it confirmation bias? Correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody in chat, feel free to correct me, but I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's, uh, that's. Like, it's when you, like, you have the answer in your head, and you want the, you want the answer to be the answer, and so everything you search, or everything that happens, every conclusion you draw, supports the answer, and you ignore, you know, anything else. Which is kind of, kind of what we're doing, I guess. <laughs> uh, yes, because girls lie too. Wait, what's the context for that? You can be bribed. Yeah, yeah, I did say no. I did get bribed a couple times, uh, and, uh, and, and I did say no. Size does not matter, Cloud, <laughs> with regards to the file. Well, you know, it's all about the girth of the file, and this was a small file, so not very girthy. <laughs> Hold on, is Esteban becoming a dictator here? He might have an affair or something, many possible reasons. And yeah, confirmation bias, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> might have an affair. I mean, maybe, but... I mean, this is... Okay, hold on. So this is, this is definitely... We need to do some research here. I'm with Lucian still. We can't jump to conclusions, but we need to check the information. And this guy immediately trying to block us from checking the information? Don't, don't do that. If anything, you should invite me and be like, yeah, sure, go for it. We just need to be quick about it, you know? <laughs> Wickles coming in with that confirmation. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Still too skeptical. Yeah. I, I feel like... Uh, Let's talk about how we can work together. Sounds a little too inviting. Hawker is definitely spying on the opposition, the communist and reformist. That's sus. Yeah, that, a little bit, isn't it? Ask why a single person is a reason to declare emergency. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. You want me to declare an emergency over one man? I understand there's a lot of separate things going on, but a state of emergency is a big thing. I mean, we are in a... We are in a state of lowercase emergency, not a state of capital... E emergency where you know there's a shift in power and stuff like that. Wickles, if you're saying what with regards to what I said, I mean coming in with that confirmation about <laughs> it's all about the girth, said with such uh with such authority. <laughs> Notice how Hawker is claiming even your cabinet is suspicious. Yeah, exactly. Like at one point I gotta draw the line at one point, right? I'm going to use that one in my next RP session, PE. I'm going to have my players meet with a police inspector and he will represent them a girthy file for them to investigate. <laughs> uh, estate of emergency. <laughs> Talk about overreacting. Yeah, just like a massive mansion somewhere. Um, yeah, Neil W, that's what it feels like, eh? Of course. We cannot wait for the process of the assembly to take care of these issues. Holy goddamn hell, that's very undemocratic. You must exercise your presidential powers for a fast and effective solution. Dude. Which means you might need to suspend parts of the Constitution to give more authority to our security forces to deal with these issues. We must officially investigate Mr. Richter as well. You can devise a strong security decree if you can base it on the Articles 57 and 58, which gives the President the right to suspend parts of the Constitution to deal with national security threats. You can directly bypass the Assembly in such a situation. The only thing you need is the Supreme Court to allow the emergency to be declared. And you have our word on that. Sir, I think this is going a bit too far. We shouldn't escalate things so fast. Mr. President, why don't we talk in private? Only the two of us. We can devise a plan together. I know how we can use the Constitution to our advantage. It would be more effective if Mr. Galade and Mr. Garassi leave the room before we discuss it. Not a chance in hell. Sir, I advise against it. You are my chief strategist. I am not a... Not, not a chance. 
Not a chance in goddamn hell. Ease, I like this Orso guy. In a different playthrough, I would totally be on board with him, but but in this playthrough, it's 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 out of character. And I'm gonna be honest, dude's like, holy hot damn, this guy's like <laughs> he's like beelining for this. He's just like, nah, state of emergency. Let's go. Full dictatorship, buddy. Let's do it. Right now, right here. Let's do it. Let's get started. <laughs> I shut them down way earlier. Fun to see how far they go at 6x Lord. Yeah, I was just like, you know, all right, listen, you you have information, share it with me. Let's find out. <laughs> but now you're kind of pushing it. <laughs> have a Snickers. I love how their 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 advertising tagline has become such a thing. He legit needs a snack. He hangry. Yeah, honestly. Dude needs a Snickers for sure. This this stream not sponsored by Snickers. I do like Snickers though. So Snickers, if somehow you're listening and you want to give me a lifetime supply of Snickers. I'm, I, w I wouldn't complain. I need a. I need a. I need a sip of water, though, folks. Just give me a quick second here. Uh, I just saw item number two. I like your idea, but I'd rather plan it together. No, I'm sorry to say that we won't be cooperating, Mr. Hawker. Get the. Get out of my office. Get. Sipping water to water, water. Having water right now. Game is very good. It's a it, it it it's it's really quite fantastic. I highlighted it as like one of the like gems from last year. It, gen it genuinely is quite a fantastic game, and I, I'd love to see more like it. They've done such a good job of it. I I, I can't help but speak, uh, sing its praises. Even though you are aware of our national security threats, you're making a big mistake, Mr. President. We will not allow you to succeed. Ho. <laughs> Ho oh, ho ho ho! Oh damn, dude! I can just straight up yell at these fools. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna throw up like an official vote, but like two or or three, two or three. Because if I'm gonna go angry, I'm gonna go full angry. I'm not gonna be like, I think you're the ones making the mistake. I'm not making veiled threats over here. I'm either like hella pissed, or I'm gonna be polite about it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, just, just, just. I'm, you know, I'm done with this nonsense. I'm done with this conspiratorial nonsense. I'm done with this calls for a dictatorship because they, they know, they know once there's a state of emergency, once there's a state of emergency, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, they're gonna have me in their, uh, like in their, not pockets, but like, I'm gonna be at their whim, basically. <laughs> belt in hand. <laughs> Natalie, it's been a while since we've taken the belt off. It's true. Threes, twos, twos, threes. Please be polite. What if you call an emergency and arrest him? Oh man, that would be ironic. But I know how that'll be spun against us. <laughs> don't don't join the dark side. Be polite. Been polite. Tell them the motto. Don't make me get my belt. Mercy. <laughs> Party is such a softie. He had the chance to grab power. Uh, actually changed my mind. Go off. <laughs> You know what? He, he's not joining the dark side. He's just deciding how to turn the light on. That's a uh, that's deep. That's deep, bro. <laughs> it's deep. Ah, let's do it. Let's do it. Enough. There was a long silence in the room. It seems the president is done with us, Heron. Let's take our leave. They stood up. Well, thank you for having us, Mr. President. Have a good evening. They both left the room without saying anything else. Oh, but they said everything. Folks, we're gonna get assassinated. <laughs> it's happening. We're, we're, this is probably the first step in a long line of, of getting assassinated. That was not good. They clearly tried to threaten you. We need to take care of them. <laughs> Orso seems more moderate than Hawker. Yeah, but they they seem close, but I think I think that's a de that's a fair assessment. <laughs> President PE Silverback Alpha politician. <laughs> Shouldn't publicly chastise them. Oh, I should publicly chastise them. The people need to know. That's kind of what I'm thinking. There's going to be consequences for that. Oh, I'm sure Ted Knight, I'm sure. Being assassinated. I mean, hey man, I got to got to got to keep my moral compass, I guess. Question mark. Uh, how dare they talk to me like that? Well, I'm not going to throw a hissy fit. Lucian, I, I trust... Look, if I don't trust my chief strategist, if I don't trust my cabinet, then, like, what have I been doing, right? My entire presidency so far. Uh, it's not true that I'm not scared of them, but I'm... Mm, <laughs> uh, 
don't know if I'm going to admit that. How dare they talk to me like that? Sounds a little hissy fitty. Uh, we have to make sure our reforms will pass the court. That's true. We need to take care of them. Sounds a little assassiny. Um, and uh, who who uh, who was it that said earlier, if I kill them, they can't kill me? <laughs> um, <laughs> Wickles, I like your uh, I like your gusto there. Dale Stevenson can't stay, but dropping a like. I'll catch the vod later. Sounds great, buddy. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for dropping the like, and uh, have a good Friday. Uh, vod will be live right after the stream is done, and it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good one, evidently. Uh, I should mention as well, folks, if you've been enjoying the stream, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a like down below. It really does help me make decisions about what to do on the channel. Uh, the response to the initial streams is why we're, you know, doing this long kind of continuation of the Let's Play, for example. So leave a like. It does make a very big difference. And if you're watching the VOD, leave a like, leave a comment. I do read the comments on VODs as well. Um, and it's been great to see the response, actually. Because my approach to live streaming, having like, you know, one of a series per week, my hope was that it would allow people to stay caught up watching VODs as opposed to feeling like they're falling behind because of like doing you know one thing continuously like three days four days five days in a row it seems to be working out so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that uh, because yeah I, I want to live stream in a format that's suitable for YouTube uh, where those VODs do play play a role so so please uh, please do uh, please do keep uh, letting me know I think uh, the reforms are a priority oh for sure oh for sure and, uh, and and to make sure those reforms go through, I think we do need to take care of them. I don't know exactly what this implies, but I have, I have my feelings. We, the reforms are definitely a priority. We, we, will, we will speak to the other uh, justices. We'll make sure that the other uh, reforms go through. Well, well, we'll try to, of course. We'll try to, of course. This isn't about bureaucrats gaining power. It's about reforming the power to the people that support you. So the people support... Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, Ease, I, I, I more or less uh, asked the same thing as well been a while, eh? You do need to take care of them, ain't that the truth? Orso will be doing whatever it takes to damage you. We need to be careful. There are still many old guard sympathizers in our party. We can't let them divide our party. And he will definitely try. After a short evaluation of the situation on our hands, Lucian left me in the presidential office. It was obvious that the old guards would be my main rivals in the near future. Okay, listen, now is the time for whiskey. <laughs> like, can I... Can we whiskey now? <laughs> What's the news got to say? Lackhaven Times. Hawker in Maroon Palace. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Chief Justice Orso Hawker has been spotted entering the Maroon Palace. Our sources are intrigued by the timing of this visit that is happening right after the increased conversations around the so-called democratic reform. Historically, Mr. Hawker usually does not frequent the palace unless for official business, and this was certainly not an unplanned visit. Clearly, there must be something he wants out of this. Our speculation is that he has something to do with the reforms. More to come on this later. People are, uh, people are noticing. I, I think, I think what we did was, was the right call. A little harsh, but we got harsh when we needed to be. We gave him an audience, we listened to him, we listened to his ramblings. Uh, but then he started crossing the line. He, he began by threatening us. So he, he crossed the line right at the beginning and we were patient with him. So honestly, he can, he can go, he, he, he can join, um, he can, he can join Walter over here. Walter and Orso can, can go dive off a cliff. The other guy too, but I don't even remember his name. He's that unimportant to me until he plots my assassination. All right, proceed to the next turn. Taking strides over here, taking strides. Trials of democracy. Oh, no. <laughs> Isn't that what we've already been working with? <laughs> it gets worse? Oh, dear. We got this. We got this. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. All right, lots of news articles, lots of updates across the board as well, it seems. Let us first see what uh, what the news has to say. Ah, uh, Hawker. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's go ahead and get that down. Orso and Hawker. Yes, of course. <laughs> he is the important one. <laughs> my, my fit of rage made me forget his name. All right, what's up? Swordland today. School poisoning in rival. Oh, jeez. Police have arrested the principal of a high school in Rival in southern Bergia, where 12 students died after eating a free meal laced with pesticide. The students, aged between 15 and 17, died after eating a lunch of local dish of Zabla, cooked at the school in a poverty-stricken city. Police have started the investigation to solve the mystery of how the pesticide ended up in the food. Oh, wow. If straight- oh, wow. The radical- oh, god. Oh, okay. I was a little worried. <laughs> uh, the economists are the ones that, uh, that, that are problematic. Time for women to stand up. 
Women of Swordland have always been under pressure by the in inequal society and the system of discrimination that was built by old men who only knew about war, said Katarina Horton in a women's rally that was held in Hallsword yesterday. Swordish labor leader, politician, and activist of British descent, member of the assembly, he is the spokesperson of the Labour Union of Swordland. Okay. Born in Dare. Fair enough. Bluedish, yep, yep, yep. 1942, became the WHR's Swordland director. Fair enough. Okay. Began organizing strikes among farm workers, some of which have been successful. Known for her emphasis on direct but non-violent tactics to pressure the state and the farm owners. Okay, okay. 53 elections, she ran as an independent and was elected to be a member of the assembly. Alright, fair enough. Good to know where uh like where she stands who she is the encounter was tense dare i say awkward <laughs> oh good stuff goddamn yeah honestly that's uh that that was that was that was, that was spot on <laughs> awkward oh dear lord um where, where was i uh the same woman's rally was held in hall sword yesterday uh swordish league of women is organizing a number of rallies across Swordland to bring the change Swordland desperately needs. It is time for Swordland to realize that we have to respect every individual regardless of their sex and strive to become an advanced civilization. Women have long been pushed to the corners of the social and political life. To address this change, a new campaign was started all over Swordland to establish a framework for women's rights. Swordish League of Women is organizing rallies with the support from Minister of Education Ciara Walda and Member of Assembly Katarina Horton. Sierra is an academ academis academician? Academician? Mission? And politician who serves as the Minister of Education, Technology, and Research of Swordland. Oh, okay. All right. She is the minister. Okay, fair enough. Uh, before her political career, taught philosophy and political sciences in several major universities, uh, including the Lackhaven Business School. All right, fair enough. Joined United Swordland to campaign for Anton Rain's candidacy. Oh, dude. All right. Yeah, she's been with us. She's been with us. She's been with us. Cool. Everybody is equal according to the Swordish Constitution. There are no protections against discrimination which only reinforces the inequality in practice, said Walda in a press conference. This movement must be supported by all Swordish women as well as men. We need to bring change now. We can do it. I'm yet to have berries tea. I do need to try it. I thought I could... Appar apparently it's available locally, but I haven't been able to pick it up yet. The newly unveiled SEPA Education Performance Report unveiled a sad reality about Swordland's abysmal status in comparison to many countries. Swordland was rated 39th out of the 68 nations that were assessed by the OMEC organization. The primary gauge of the quality of education is made from a sample of 16-year-olds from each nation and their capacity in fields like mathematics, history, chemistry, and many others. One of the key issues was seen as the strong focus on history and citizenship classes leaving little time for scientific fields. Oh, I see. I see. Minister Walda often mentioned the gaps in the system in her assembly debates before she joined the cabinet. Um, often mentioned the gaps in the system in her... Okay, cool. Uh, this was also supported by one of our editors, a professor from Hullsword State, who had long been critical of the situation in secondary education. The SEPA report reveals the damning truth, that solace education, based on the principles of statism, nationalism, republicanism, poisons the bright minds of our children. We need to rid the system from the poison that is ideological indoctrination and that our future generations think for themselves. Yeah, also, I don't know if you read the news, buddy, but um, on the topic of poison <laughs> in our education system. Let's see what these guys have to say. Oh, dear. Upcoming government budget changes. As the top economy experts in the country, <laughs> we have been... <laughs> What, a, what an opener. We have been watching the upcoming changes to the government budget very closely. President Anton Rain's first internal economic, economical challenges lie ahead, and we will see if he can prove his capabilities as a leader who can think ahead. The potential ramifications of diverting the funding to certain governmental branches has always been a point of contention for any leader, and it is no different for this case. We will see if President Rain can hold on to the promises he has given during the election campaign. Ooh. Might we perhaps sway the economists if we full, if we stick to our promises? I do like I do like our uh, our promises. I intend to stick to them as much as possible. 
Uh, is this a two hour stream or closer to three like last week? I'm gonna have to be closer to two today. Um, I got a pretty packed day. Got some more uh, recording and editing and stuff to do later. So gonna have to stick to that two hours uh, today, Jazzy B. But uh, hopefully we don't get caught up in a, in, a, in a plot hook that becomes irresistible. But that just serves to become a, uh, uh, what's it called? A, a cliffhanger. All right, <laughs> service guaranteed citizenship. Are y'all doing your part? Van Horten blames Vogslin for the missing fishing vessel. Oh no. On Tuesday morning, Agnolia's Prime Minister Van Horten has made a statement denouncing Vogslin for the missing vessel, hull number ARV0238. Our dutiful Coast Guards have rescued a crew member of the missing vessel. Through his statement, we had learned the ship's unfortunate end was none other than Vogslin's navy. However, the Prime Minister has refused to disclose the surviving crew member due to fear of an assassination attempt from Vogsland to cover up their hostility, as the Minister later claimed. Um, okay, a little, little while. A little while. Damn right, Ease. Not a chance I'm gonna miss that one. Ah, oh, kinda wanna rewatch it. It's been a while. Rewatch, reread, both. Uh, Alright, let's, let's start, let's start, let's start over here. What's going on? Here. These are all just like uh, reports, not uh, not actionable items. Communist books burned in Borin. Oh dear lord! <laughs> Local residents gathered thousands of books that have that they have claimed to be spreading communist and millennialist propaganda at the Century Park in Borin, and set the books on fire. Aggressive slogans targeting the Red Youth, the Workers' Party of Bludia, and the Communist Party of Sordland were shouted. Youth groups from the local party offices of the USP and NFP also joined in with the burning. The fire department was dispatched, and the protesters dispersed on their own. Really? We're burning books now? We're burning... really? Come on, man. I think one of my favorite moments in that movie, by the way, is... Um, uh, mobile infantry made me the man I am today, and then he, like, pushes the chair outside. <gasps> what? Dude! Classified! What are the chances you say that? Well, the timing there is uncanny, but yes, <laughs> that's probably one of my like favorite like moments. Um, good stuff. God, I love them. Uh, young swords and NFP flags burned. Oh my God, you gotta why? A massive counter protest against young swords led by politicians known to be aligned with the Red Youth resulted in many injuries and property damage. Subsequently, young swords and National Front party flags were burnt, which caused tensions to escalate. Local police dispersed the protesters by sundown. Ah, uh, we're burning books, we're burning flags, what are you gonna burn next? Burning some books doesn't harm anyone, say that to the library to Alexandria. <laughs> oh, hurt myself there. Bluetish resistance in sanctuaries. Security units have arrested three priests at two different Nuriti sanctuaries in Sarna after finding links to insurgent activities. The report came from an elderly man who wanted to pray in peace, but instead found himself invited to join the Bluetish Freedom Front by a state-sanctioned priest. Further incidents indicate that the BFF is pushing for a local recruitment drive in different sanctuaries across the region. Oh my lord. That is a problem. If anything, burning books can prevent hypothermia, so... Oh lord. <laughs> we got enough dumpster fires going around, going around like across the country. There's enough heat. Narble reports lack of hospitals. Mayor of Narble has reported that their hospitals are overburdened and they are unable to respond to the needs of the citizens. He complained about months-long wait lists for terminally ill patients. On top of the capacity issues, it was also noted that the facilities are still largely using 1920s technology. Oh dear. That's uh okay, that's that's that, that's that's definitely problematic. Poor healthcare, poor education. Recession hits farmers again. Ah oh, damn. As per the latest news from Lock Haven, the farming industry has taken another hit as a result of the recession. There are reports that 16% of all wheat in Lock Haven are rotting in barns from a lack of buyers. Farmers are requesting additional funds from the government to survive the year. Oh man, that's rough. Oh, that's rough. I remember when I was like, when I first, as a child, like as a kid, when I first started understanding how all these things intertwine. And, uh... Just like, damn, you know? <laughs> this game does a good job of, like, keeping all that in, uh, taking all that into consideration. Looks like YouTube is popping open the floodgates for a second over here. 
it's so I don't know why YouTube's been doing this for uh, for for the last little while, for the last like month or so now, where it, like withholds all the subscriptions and then unleashes them all at once. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and l l let me know by the way. I, I normally like hide the alert box when this is happening because I feel like it can get pretty uh, grating to have that alert pop up like 20 times in a span of 30 seconds. Um, I also feel bad every time I do it because I, I like you know recognizing like putting it front and center. Uh, so I've been I've been having that internal battle, you know. It's becoming like a Pavlov belt to hydrate. It really has. I was just about to say, hang on a sec, folks. I'm like losing my voice. This game requires a lot of reading and a lot of uh, a lot of yelling sometimes, apparently. So it does it does do a number on my voice, and I got to make sure I can record afterwards as well. All right. Ooh, well, let's get that alert box back on so we don't miss anything. But I do, of course, want to say thank you to Karias, Rob Charvat, Tim Schles Schlesinger. Hope I got that right. Uh, A S D F G H J K C V B, <laughs> Lynn Lass, Davy Abari Jr., Sierra and Humphreys. Thank you all very much for subscribing. I do hope you're enjoying the show, whatever it is you're watching, whether it's this or something else. I hope you're having a good time, and uh, thank you for joining in. Welcome to all of our new subscribers. You can set up a delay on the pop-up. Uh, I can, but when they all come together at the same time like that, uh, the delay would basically stack, right? Because even though it's delayed, or, or you mean like a, like, a, like a timer in between? That's a good idea. I'll, I'll look into that, Flippers. Thank you. That's a good point. Uh, I will look into that and see how that can be set up with uh, Streamlabs. Uh, Alright, I believe that's everything taken a look at. So let's, on, let's head on over to Hull Sword. Barbecue with Frank. Really, buddy? Really? <laughs> They burn. We were burning books. We're burning flags, and now we got a barbecue. What is? Come on, <laughs> barbecue with Frank. All right, it's 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 with our son. It's with our son. So a nice nice family moment. Uh, it's not pronounced Karen. It's it's Karen. Oh, you learn something new every day. Thanks for the heads up. Where the whiskey at? Oh, oh. <laughs> didn't didn't read the second sentence correctly the first time. Wickles. Uh, have some opportunities to privatize some sectors to gain more budget that would be beneficial. Yeah, we have to keep that balance, right? We have to keep that balance of, like, private but with rules handed down from the government. All right. It was a Saturday afternoon. My first break from work in what felt like years, and the weather couldn't have been more perfect. Trying to keep my mind off the upheaval sparked by this circus assassination, I lit the backyard grill. Monica and Deanna were out shopping for craft supplies, and I'd given the staff the day off. It was just myself and Frank at home. Oh, okay, this is where we get assassinated. I wasn't sure how he felt about me at the moment, but I did know how he felt about barbecued ribs. Our cook had left some marinating in the fridge. Sure enough, as soon as Frank glimpsed the grill and the meat, he stepped outside to join me. Uh, come to spend some quality time with your old man, have you? That seems a bit more, that, that seems like a friendly jab as opposed to, well, look who's finally out of his room. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you hear the tonal difference? Come to spend some quality time with your old man, have you? Sure, if you can spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule. <laughs> Children who talk back to their fathers don't get dinner. Fan these flames, will you? <laughs> look, son, I'm preoccupied with matters of national importance. No, 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 I'm sorry. I know I haven't been around very often lately. But I'm happy to see you now. <laughs> Children who talk back to their fathers don't get dinner. Holy crap. <laughs> Will I get poisoned at the barbecue? Yeah, a little bit of pesticide. It's okay. I know you've got the most stressful job in the country. And you've got to feed your family on top of it all. We both chuckled. I turned to tend to the fire. Here, let me try. He grabbed the fan and started quickly waving it over the coals. The fire roared to life. He turned to look at me with a grin on his face, as if he was expecting praise. <laughs> Don't act like you've done something special, Frank. <laughs> the mean options are so mean, man. Holy hot damn. <laughs> it's just like there's absolutely zero chill in that statement. It's just like... <laughs> hot. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna say good job. <laughs> Three is the obvious answer. Uh, no, no, good job. <laughs> Don't act like you've done something special, Frank. 
<laughs> Good job. Good job, kiddo. Thank you, sir. It is in our utmost interest to fulfill our duties with precision. The grilling shall commence in exactly one minute and 32 seconds. That was a spot-on impersonation of Lucian. We looked at each other for a second, then burst out laughing. I realized my throat was parched. There was a six-pack of beer in the kitchen. Oh, I know exactly where this is going. This conversation only goes down one direction. W uh, will there be a brutal tough man playthrough? I'm definitely tempted. He's competition. <laughs> Raising a softy scold him to make him a great leader in the future. Hey, man, he takes his grilling seriously. How soft could he be? Frank, can you get me a beer? Why don't you bring us a couple beers? Get up and grab a beer. Uh, why don't you bring us a couple beers? Because, yeah, you can read below the, read between the lines there, right? Grab us, a, grab us a couple beers. He looked at me in disbelief. You mean I can... But Mom told me... He stopped himself. <laughs> Quickly ran inside and returned with two beers. We cracked them open, clinked the bottles, and gazed out at the city skylight. Man, I could, oh, I could use a beer. Um... I love this. I love the realization of like, a, listen, don't question it. Don't bring up what mom said. Dad's saying this right now. We can deal with it later. Exactly. Gotta give him a beer. Poison beer. Oh, no. For a moment, my thoughts flashed back to my childhood and my relationship with my own father. My father was a hardworking man and always had our best interests in mind. Or at least that's what he always said. But he had a temper and would lash out at my mother in fights I could hear from my bedroom. By the time I was Frank's age, we seldom spoke. Now that I was the president, I was facing more stress than my father ever had. I would have to work hard not to take my frustrations out of my family. Drinking one for me right now sounds good, Judah. Thanks for having me covered. Cracked your own beer, Ease. <laughs> oh, I could definitely, could definitely use a nice cold one right now. Uh, let me know, by the way, folks, is the stream still uh, coming through clear? YouTube is giving me some yellow flags, not red flags, but yellow flags. I want to make sure everything is still working okay as we uh, move through. Yeah, cheers indeed, cheers indeed. Yeah, I, I got I got some water here. Cheers. I don't know if the clink came through. All right, to 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 Friday and the weekend ahead. It's easy to forget that politicians are humans too. Sometimes they have their own lives. Yeah, like, like disliked families. Yeah, it's true. And I, I really like that about this game as well, that it has that uh, that dimension to it. It has that, like... It was a, it was the first one of the first things that, like, quote-unquote, touched me about the game, I guess. It's just like, oh, it's not just about, quote-unquote, the politics. There's, like, that extra layer, right? It's like an ogre. It's got layers. Um, All good? All right, sounds good, sounds good. Thanks for, thanks for the check, folks. Dad... Can I ask you something? Oh, no. Um, we're family. You can ask anything. It's just... I feel like there's so much you've been hiding from me. About your past and about what's going on right now. Like at dinner that night after the ball. You told me everything was under control, but it wasn't, was it? I know what happened in the 20s. We learned all about it in school. Now, with the protests and the riots, is it going to be the same thing? Dad, is there going to be a civil war in Swordland? Oh, this poor kid, man. Um, <laughs> say nothing and avoid his question. Like I said, absolutely zero chill <laughs> with, the, with the bad uh, things. I hope not is, is like, accepting, um, uh, not, not fragility, but, uh, like, the reality of the situation. I will never let it happen. I think, you know, the, the kid's getting old, but he does still, I think, need his, uh, his dad to 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 I, I need to express I think I need to express confidence to instill confidence and, and make him a confident uh you know young man and 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 hopefully hopefully it doesn't make him overconfident I think he's gonna I think he's gonna ask more questions still answer to his babying him hmm okay okay I, I think that's reasonable I think that's reasonable sure sure you know what sure I hope not fair I, I see what you're saying Oh, two! I saw I saw those twos come in afterwards. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I mean I was I was torn between the two. It's a it's a tough one because it's just like, how, how old is this kid? I wish I could see his age right here. He's like 16 or something, right? I mean he's 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 getting the kid needs to look up to you. Yeah, but um, there's something about admitting that some things are out of your control, right? And it's it's good to know that some things are just out of your control. 
It's good to accept that. He let out a sigh. Oh no. But what was it like back then? Uncle Peter said the two of you went through a lot. I'm not a kid anymore. You can tell me. Before I could gather my thoughts, the familiar images started flashing before my eyes. Images of soldiers advancing towards me and my friends, weapons drawn. Of people I knew, friends and neighbors, being dragged through the streets and murdered in alleyways. And that little girl's face. Those were dark times. Seems like it. But you're nearly a grown man. Let's talk about it. Frank leaned forward in his chair, his eyes wide. Um... Tell him about the Civil War first, perhaps? If he's old enough for a beer, he's old enough to know things aren't perfect. It's, uh... Legally, he's not old enough for a beer. <laughs> but I, I, I know, I like what you're getting at. Don't disagree. I can trust him. Uh, I can trust him with a beer. I can trust him with, uh, you know, the reality of uh, of the situation, the circumstances. Promising miracles is a double-edged sword. Absolutely true. Don't make promises you can't keep. It's true. Um, let's speak to him about the Civil War first. Hopefully, we can speak to him about both. Well, hopefully, we can speak to him about everything he wants to know. He asked about the Civil War, right? Yeah. It's time to tell him about the Civil War. It was right after I met your mother. We had both joined the same human rights group to push for change after the coup of 27. Eventually, I became convinced I wasn't doing enough, so I joined the Red Youth. Then, one night, it happened. Two different factions in the army, one of them led by fascist General Luterin and the other led by socialist General Rickard, started fighting against each other. It was a bloodbath. Nowhere was safe. Frank shifted in his seat, visibly uncomfortable. So, we organized a protest one day in support of Rickard. In our minds, he was the better of the two, and a true socialist. I'm going to tell him about the girl. If I'm being open with him, I I'm going to be open with him. Lying through a mission is not my style. I paused for a moment before continuing. It was horrible. They were waiting for us. Soldiers started beating and shooting at everyone and plowing their tanks into the crowd. Amid the chaos, there was this girl. I never forgot her face. I, I tried to save her, but I couldn't reach her in time. Frank's face had grown pale. He turned his eyes away from me. Oh, it's tough. Is that enough for today? Can he hear more? He turned his eyes away from me, but that could be for any number of reasons. Uh, you, you, there are choices, Arthur Shelby. Uh, there are choices um, that you can make in your backstory. And one of the choices, I believe, is about saving the girl. Uh, either trying to physically save her or, or, or not. Um, and I believe that would change this conversation. I, I imagine it would change this conversation. I think I should tell him. He's just looking for his beer. Yeah. It was time to tell him about the coup of 1927. <laughs> Give him the full story. Welcome to life. Go all in. Yeah. I was barely older than you are now. Studying history at the Dare University of Culture. I was a freshman. Excited and young. I just left the classroom to go back home as I heard the sound of multiple vehicles approaching the campus gates. As it got closer, I realized they were military camouflage tanks carrying hundreds of soldiers. The same soldiers that were supposed to protect Swordland citizens pointed their guns at us. They immediately took control of the facilities. One of my friends asked what was going on and was arrested immediately. More people got angry and gathered in protest. Frank kept listening. A shocked look on his face. I was there with the protesters as they declared martial law. We marched towards them. 
They threatened to use force, but we stood our ground. So they started beating anyone they saw, including me. The physical wounds took a few weeks to heal, but the mental scars have stayed with me to this day. Oh, I was lucky or I stayed strong. I stayed strong, I think. In for a franc, in for a pound. <laughs> Natural on a roll, a Kaiser roll. Oh dear lord. Now, you, now, you make, now, you, now you're making me hungry. Now I'm thinking about like egg rolls. I think I stayed strong. Uh, yeah, I stayed strong. Luck doesn't exist. Was I, was I, was I, was I lucky? Or did I stay strong? I stayed strong. By the way, this is also, it was asked earlier, this is also based on choices during your backstory in the prologue. Um, I stayed strong. I tried my best to stay strong. Some of my friends were shot, many more were arrested. I can't forget the screams to this day. But I'm proud not to have faltered. Frank leaned back in his chair. His shoulders slumped heavily. That's enough for today. It's okay, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have asked you about it. I know I don't understand how easy my life is sometimes. One more thing though, I know that you joined Red Youth back then. Do you mind if I ask why? <laughs> um... Oh geez, I don't like really any of these options if I'm completely honest. Yeah, I like how the uh, the flashbacks were were explained. Yeah, the uh, the the cartel game, um, we we played that until I got wiped basically. So that that that's been replaced by uh, Phantom Brigade, which has been a lot of fun. Once Phantom Brigade is done, by the way, I might go back to uh, Battle Brothers. I've been I've been uh, fiending for some more Battle Brothers. Three sounds realistic, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> go red or lose your head, son. <laughs> I think three sounds realistic because we're not. We don't believe, too. Um, I don't want to be rude to him. I exactly, Six Sex Lord, exactly. Two sounds fanatical, three sounds dismissive. That's why I was hoping that I wish there was another option, exactly. Uh, I had to survive somehow in that environment, and I made a choice. Frank raised his eyebrows, his curiosity still not satisfied. But sensing my reluctance to go on, he simply nodded. To go on. Sorry for bombarding you with questions. I know I complain sometimes, but my problems are nothing compared to what you went through. <laughs> You're damn right! Your generation will never understand! <laughs> oh, bringing some levity. Um, I'm here to listen to them, no matter what they are. Before Frank could say anything else, I heard the front door unlock. Deanna and Monica's voices and the sounds of rustling shopping bags filled the house. Man, we were having a moment. All right, I'll be upstairs until dinner. Frank went in and dashed upstairs. I mean, the ribs are definitely, like, burned. Did we already put them on the grill and then have this whole conversation? I took a long sip from my beer, looking at the city and now setting sun. <laughs> to go to school uphill both ways. I hope that talking to Frank about my past had been the right decision. Part of me felt as if some sort of burden had been lifted. But I had the same nightmares again that night. And dude, got this haunted goddamn past, man. Uh, Alright, what does the news have to say about my conversation with my son? Get off my lawn! <laughs> Let me speak to my family in peace. The whole sort of, I'm joking, obviously. I, I mean, like, don't, don't, don't paparazzi me, but I don't think the news is about my son. <laughs> a Halsford Post. Attacker opened fire on protesters. 17 dead. A man opened fire in Vessord city center during a protest march organized by the Communist Party of Swordland against the murder of Bernard Circus. The attacker used a military-grade machine gun dated 1929, which is suspected to be part of the inventory of the Swordish Armed Forces. The attacker killed himself right after shooting at 25 people, killing 16. Oh dear. 
He took out the weapon from the newsstand at the square, brandished it, and yelled, Come, I will give you freedom, one witness said. The highly charged word freedom was previously associated with Blutish separatists, but has been used widely during the previous month of protest against the murder of Bernard Circus. Minister of the Interior, Lilius Graf, said that she had spoken to the chief of Vessord police and asked him to take strict action. The government will not tolerate any such incident, and the perpetrators will not be spared, she said. Holy crap. <laughs> Grill the- oh my god, Jazzy. <laughs> Breaking. President speaks to son. 17 dead. <laughs> President's son drinks beer. Kills 17. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, Sergio, I... think so? I'm not sure. I haven't been keeping count, but maybe. Can you check the Swordish Armed Forces his- oh, sure. Uh, Swordish Armed Forces, yeah. The SAF, Military Forces of the Republic of Swordland, with its headquarters in Hullsword, SAF consists of the General Staff, the Land Forces, the Naval Forces, and the Air Forces. The current Chief of the General Staff and the Chief of the Armed Forces is General Vulcan Kruger. The General Staff may act as the Commander-in-Chief on behalf of the President. The General Staff also holds the authority to reject a President's candidate for the position of Minister of Defense, and may appoint its own candidate when they deem it necessary. The Swordish military perceives itself as the Guardian of Solism, the official ideology of the Second Republic era of the Republic of Swordland. The Swordish Armed Forces is the second largest standing military force in Eastern Maricopa after the Rumbergian Armed Forces. Ah. Currently, the military is a conscripted force. Males serve in the military upon reaching the age of 18. Well, we can definitely increase our numbers as we reform that. Hopefully that becomes an option for reformation. But, uh, interesting, we're the second largest military. However, technologically we are pretty, uh, not good <laughs> is one way to put it what's this game about you are the president of a nation that is basically falling apart because of a countless issues from ideological issues to economic issues to political issues it's a text-based political simulator slash rpg where you try to uh grow this nation and, and make it prosperous and recover from all these troubles so uh uh that's sort of the, the, the quick summary of it i suppose that's a quick summary of it Talks of a coup and civil war with families reported. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, did I miss something? Nope. Just just beer over, uh, beer over, uh, over a barbecue. All right. Uh, that's that. Lackhaven Times. Gelsword FC. Anrika FC. Derby postponed due to protests. Oh dear. One of the most anticipated matches between Gelsword and Anrika was postponed because of the in intense protest in the city of Anrika. The league has issued the following statement regarding the situation. Due to safety reasons, the players are compromised during this time of trouble. We have decided to postpone the game. Moreover, we stand in solidarity with the fans, our players, and the people of Anrika in the fight against injustice. In, well, what injustice? <laughs> what, what, what were you guys protesting for? Oh, these cities are actually rival cities, eh? Fight it out with their football teams. That's a good way to fight out rivalries. I, I assume they mean football played with the foot. Mayor Curtin Lest has also made a statement. It is a tragic day of Swordland, or for Swordland, where the president himself refused to act in the face of communism. Blackhaven Times, all right. Uh, it is said that inaction breeds doubt and fear. Thus, I fear that the spread of communism has sown deeper inside the heart of the nation than we thought. However, I and the people of Anrika will never stop fighting for the soul of our great country. Oh, okay, I see it. I see it. I love empty announcements. With regards to what? Sorry, fool, uh, foolproof man. We have our sticks and stones. Yeah, that's basically our military strength in terms of technology. The radical, undemocratic elections of Swordland. Oh, come on, guys. Swordland has an electoral threshold of 10%. This means any political parties that are under 10% of the vote can't even enter the assembly. This is the very reason why the United Swordland Party holds 52% of the seats in the assembly today. That's not true. It is also the reason why the largest ethnic minority of Swordland is non-existent in Swordish politics. Okay, listen, hang on. Okay, first of all, this isn't true. We held 52% of the seats before the electoral threshold. Um, oh no, you know what? No, okay, this is true. My bad. Uh, I changed how the funding worked. This has been true since before. Okay, listen fine. <laughs> uh, the only reason we passed our, our, our reform, though, by the way, way back when, was because we didn't want to veto it. Just as a reminder, I feel I feel wronged by some of these articles sometimes. The last elections have shown that 
the pro Bluetooth WPB had an enormous voter base of just above 9%, but it still failed to meet the 10% threshold and couldn't enter politics. Similarly, the CPS has won around 8% of the general vote but was eliminated. This means that millions of votes are not represented in our current government. Moreover, this has benefited the USP the most and gave them the lawmaking power. Again, that's us. The undemocratic threshold needs to be lowered down so there is a true representation in the assembly and a true representation of our voices. No one can call Swordland a democracy without a decrees or a constitutional proposal that does not include such change democratic. Threshold as problematic as I thought. Yeah, it's a weird, uh, so it's, it's a weird one, that's for sure. A radical is never wrong. It's like a Bible of newspapers. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are they, are they twisting the situation to make us look even worse? Because some of these papers, man, some of these papers are, I'm not, I'm not naming names, but some of these newspapers are problematic. Oh, how did we end up on The Economist? Oh, that was not intentional. <laughs> uh, what do we have over here with the highway? H3 report from SSC. SSC's project manager for the H3 highway has reported that the work has been going well and they have already started laying down the foundations of the ground retaining walls, bridges, and earthworks. Project supervisors from the government confirmed the report, saying that most of the preliminary work has already been done by the SSC. However, the government officials added that there were a couple of delays related to the transportation of construction materials, which were not included in the SSC's report. Oh, no. So, uh, again, the uh, just as a reminder, the highway project is being handled by the State Construction uh, Corporation. It is the Sordish State Corporation, they seemed like the right option. It was also in keeping with our promise. So uh, so we went with these guys. If anything, you should raise it to 25%. <laughs> Reduce the, the, the other voices even further. Uh, what next? What next? We have a couple of reports, actually. Hullsword. USP report on reforms. Many members of the USP, led by Albin Clavin. Okay. I think this guy is a bit of a reformist. Uh, led by Alvin, Alvin Clavin and the reformist wing of the party, clarified the demands from the government in the party congress. Seems to be. For the upcoming constitutional reform, Alvin Clavin stated that without minister reforms, they won't be able to stand behind the new reform package. Oh dear, even more. Even more. Fair enough. Up over here, prisoners riot in Antel Rock Prison. Yesterday, around 11 a.m., a prison riot started in Ward C of the Antel Rock Prison, which was eventually suppressed. Ward C is generally used for keeping political prisoners, and the riot started when a warden was killed by a bluish political prisoner. Four guards and 21 prisoners died. 134 were injured. Man, that is a bad riot. That is not some small riot. That is major. That is major. Oh, I, I think I think Hedicott was joking there. <laughs> oh man. Oh, prison riots. I'm surprised they didn't burn the prison now. We've been on a burning binge lately. All right, what's the deal over here? Presiden presidential visit to Narble. In the state car, the road to Narble. I was traveling to the snow-covered city of Narble in the Nargis region for the Rural Development Forum organized by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education. I see they're going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He is a reformist. Okay. He wrote the thing about taking funding from other parties, the one you didn't veto. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, interesting. Thanks for the heads up. The mountainous city of Narble had gritty tones to it. <laughs> it's mostly regarded as one of the poorer cities in Sorland. Its people were hardy and wary. Even after the discovery of natural resources in the area, years of neglect by the central government were apparent on the buildings and the general infrastructure. Natural resources, namely gas and oil, were now under the control of Gassum, which elevated the corporation to a place of power. Oh, dear lord. It's like a, is it like a local Walmart. Walmart? Walmart. Is that Walmart really funny there? Uh, incorporated in 1925, one of the largest corporations in Sorland extracts da, 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 several investors from United Contana. Interesting. Primary area of operations. Okay, nothing about the investment and excavation turned Narbo from a town to a city, allowing employment of all sorts for the local populace. The entire, entire city is reliant on these guys. That's always uh, interesting. My task in this forum was mainly symbolic. Fake smiles and handshakes with oil barons, meeting with local politicians, but most importantly of all, to make sure that Narble does not feel like it was forgotten by the government. 
The scenery so far, however, was a reflection of Narvel's neglect. Main roads to the city were not maintained well. There were many bumps and empty discolored spots in the asphalt. Navigating and swerving to avoid the inconveniences, our motorcade finally started nearing the city. As if my discomfort from the bumpy ride was apparent to him, Serge rolled down the partition window. Every time I read his name, by the way, I think about System of Down. We'll be arriving at Hotel West in a few minutes, sir. Thank you for letting me know. I don't want to be rude to him. Um, yeah, thank you for letting me know. Anytime, it is my duty. After a moment, Serge started to smile under his mustache. Uh, what's that smile for? I, I hope that's a, like a nice, you know, like a, what's that smile for? Not that, but more like a, oh, what's that smile about? What you smiling about, buddy? Ease. Oh, no, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> that is a newbie mistake. Damn. Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to speak to him. Uh, but I'm. I'm. I guess how's life is the safer option from like a tonal perspective. This is like we know it's inviting a conversation as opposed to potentially shutting it down. So let's say how's life. Yeah, exactly, Ted. I I, I agree. Sir, I just want to say, it has been great these last two months. As you know, my wife Susan recently gave birth to our son, sir. And now my daughter just started at a very good high school in Hallsort. Named, uh, the wife is named after this game. Get ready, Serge, because life is about to become a lot busier now. That's great news, Serge. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Ooh, ah, ooh. Which one, uh... No. I want to be more excited rather than just like a, you know, congratulations. That's just, that's a word. That's great news, Serge. I'm happy for you. I appreciate it, sir. Truly. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to afford a good private school if she scored less in the entrance exams. But I shouldn't have made my insecurity get to me. Erica outsmarts me all the time. Very proud to have a daughter like her. Um, she must have taken the smarts after her mother. I do not value insecurity in my employees, Serge. <laughs> oh, dear lord. That must mean she's taking the smarts after her mother. I mean, that's funny. But I don't know. I... I, I like, is he going to take it as a joke, or is he going to take uh, take offense to that? I would... Me, in, in like, real-world party elite, I would make this joke in a heartbeat. And then I would, you know, regret it and think about it every night for the next 30 years of my life, not being able to sleep. You know something bad will happen to the daughter? Oh, no, well, oh, don't, don't. I hope not. I feel... I feel... Oh. It's clearly a joke, right? All right, you're right. You know what? You're right. Clearly a joke. So that means she must have taken the smarts after her mother. He let her laugh. Right, good. He's not gonna... <laughs> yeah, he laughed. We're good. He's not gonna turn around, pistol in hand, and assassinate me one day while driving me to the middle of nowhere. She must have. My daughter looks up to the First Lady for inspiration, and it's not just my daughter, sir. She's an inspiration for almost all women in the country. But at the same time, it must be hard for the First Lady as well. All this attention, adjusting to this new high-profile life and a husband that has great responsibility. You're right, it is hard for her. It must be, sir. We sometimes forget the important people in life between all the responsibility and rush. You know, those we care for. <laughs> Spare me your lecture, Serge. Yes, Serge, I get it. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm gonna go with I agree. Uh... Serge continued after a moment's silence. Have I told you, sir? We named my son George. Your George? George? The doctors said he is very healthy, and thankfully so is my wife. Um, why did you want another child? That's good. I hope the hospital had good service. Tell me more about Susan, what kind of person... Yeah, just ignore what he's talking about right now. Um, why did you want another child? Seems like a weird question. Um, that's good. I hope the hospital had a good service. I I, 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 I know where this is going. It, I don't, I'm worried it didn't. Oh yeah, the game gives you a lot of a lot of room to be just straight up douchey. <laughs> from, from evil to douchey. Clearly an imperialist name assassinate him. The the child? <laughs> Normally we would have been treated in one of the suburban hospitals. But thanks to the special coverage of the presidential staff, we were transferred to Emerald State Hospital. Uh, 
Emerald State. I, I don't want to like. I agree. We need to increase the quality of service for all, but I don't want to like take away from his. You know, he he he's sharing. We're bonding here. I don't want to talk business when we're when we're trying to bond. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, the game is pretty cheap, and Sean, if you are looking to pick it up, actually, I need to remember to. <laughs> I, I always forget to do this, but if you're looking to pick it up, if you pick it up from this link that I'm about to drop in chat right now, you'll actually support the channel as you buy the game. Uh, you don't have to do it, but uh, the, again, there's no ob obligation, never any obligation, but if you pick it up here to support the channel and charity, I would, uh, obviously I would appreciate that. But again, no obligation, but if you are planning on picking it up, there you go, buddy. Link is in chat, and you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and pin that message as well. Why not? Uh, all right, back uh, back to business, though. Two seems fair. Glad that I could help. Does that seem a little self-aggrandizing? I feel like one one is the way to go. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the game isn't on Nexus. Yeah, ease. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like that's why I have to be like careful with the other uh, commands and stuff as well. I've been trying to figure that out because this game is not available on Nexus, but it is available on Humble Bundle. Uh, but Nexus is a great place to pick up other games to support the channel uh, as well. If you would uh, if you'd like to do that. Uh, Emerald State is a great hospital. Let's go with that. Uh, this feels a little too self-aggrandizing. I don't want to pat myself on the back. Torpor Games! Hey, glad you can make it again. <laughs> glad you can make it again. How's it going? Hope you had a good week. Hope you have a good weekend ahead of you. The equipment and the staff were exceptional. <sighs> I already started thinking about their university education. Especially Erica. I want to send her to a good private school, but with the current state of the economy, it's going to be hard for us. Uh, oh, wow. Um, oh, whoa, okay. That's unexpected. I can sort of pay for this kid's education? For both of these kids' educations? Working hard on the 1.1 patch, knee-deep in development again after reading everything from everywhere. That's awesome. It's really cool to see uh, see the uh, active response to like feedback and stuff like that. Looking forward to see the kind of changes y'all are bringing through. I, I, I was saying it earlier. Honestly, I'm, it's moments like this. Your timing is impeccable, Torpor Games. It's moments like this that make this game just... So much more than, you know, just a political... You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, there's so much... Even the, the barbecue with my son earlier is a moment. Um, I'm gonna pay for his education. I think I'm gonna pay for the, the kid's education. I feel like it drops our personal wealth, but... We're the president. It'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's also, it's also life insurance, so we don't have a, an assassin chauffeur, but... That's uh, that's not my primary motivation. This is definitely in the back of my mind, but damn, dude, he just had another kid, and to have to worry about their education from what before their first words. You know what? I can pay for the education of your children. Let's do it. I'm not in it for the personal gain. Exactly, exactly. Like I've got my, I've got my, I've got my investment as well in that radio pocket pocket radio company right hopefully it'll come back the and and i thought i saw someone say like practice what you preach yeah let's spread that wealth right help this guy out mr president there is no way i can with one look from me serge cut his sentence short and nodded at me after removing his hat mr president i don't know how i can ever repay for this thank you sir Thank you. Oh, this is tough. Um, money is never more important than education. I hope you return the favor. That's by helping. Like, I, I like the idea of this, paying it forward, but that's such a weird, like, I think no worries, Surge, actually. I think no worries is, is, is the response. I think no worries is... Is response. What do y'all think? I see foolproof man there say, suggesting number two. So I agree with the sentiment of paying it forward, and it's like it's a outside of the game. It's a very big part of like my own. Like I, I like the concept of paying it forward. 
However, in the context of this conversation, I feel like it's a, uh, it's a, it's it puts him in a weird position. Um, and I'm torn between one and three personally. Money is never more important than education. Is something I agree with. But is that belittling his situation where dude's clearly not got the money for that? You, you know what I'm getting at? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I don't want to give him a lecture either. Yeah. I'm seeing a good spread of like ones and threes, ones and threes. He's giving things away, is asking for being screwed over. Well, it's, uh, I think the, the implication is there. Like, I, I, I don't think this man will be quick to forget what I'm trying to do for him. Right. And, uh, and, and that can be repaid in, in, in other ways, so to speak. Um, I think three is the way to go. Food is more important than education. It feels ignorant. Well, I, I guess one could, yeah, you could, you could, you could draw the conclusion, but I, I don't, I don't think that's the intent of the statement. I think, uh, I think the intent of the statement is like, I would ra I, per like, uh, the president, I would rather be poor than see uh somebody not get their education you know what i mean but but i but i get what you're saying though i'm gonna go with three no worries search i think i've decided i'll give your name to my boy george anton walkner oh damn dude may he grow strong like you are oh dude ah <laughs> I, uh, oh man, I'm sure he will. I, I don't want to be. It has a nice ring to it. I like it. Sounds very like me, 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 me. Uh, I want to say. I want to focus on the may he grow strong. Yes, I, I'm sure he will. That is very sweet. That is very sweet. You know what else is sweet? Ghost Knight official joining in as our latest member. A warm welcome to Ghost Knight official. Thank you very much, buddy. Throw up your flags. Throw up your E's if you don't have flags. I want to make sure. Uh, we, 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 we welcome our latest night. Thanks again. That kind of support really does help uh, really does help the uh, channel and, and, and these live streams. So I appreciate it greatly. Appreciate it greatly. I was gonna I was gonna make the same joke, six X Lord. Just the middle name? Pfft. Ask for my money back. <laughs> Man, that's a that's a sweet turn of events. The car hit a major plot hole and a bump which lifted us up in our seats for a second. <laughs> I love the the, the 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 break there. It's good. Uh, this is unacceptable. We need to invest in infrastructure here. Yeah, don't talk his ear. Are you fine? I want to check on this guy. Yes, sir. I hope the car is fine, too. The motorcade began approaching the hotel. The Hotel West was supposedly the best hotel in Narble. A large 25-story main building was undoubtedly one of the taller and more expensive buildings in the city. It towered over the nearby slums and had been a target for protests when it was first built. Yet you wonder why. A crowd was gathered in front of the hotel with the welcoming committee at its center. As we approached the red carpeted entrance, I could see the mayor of Narble and his top aides. Serge got out of the car and opened the door. He bowed his head respectfully and gestured towards the entrance. Uh, thank you. Always say please and thank you. Right? Have a good day, Mr. President. As soon as I left the vehicle, the fresh air of Narble filled my lungs. Almost immediately, everyone present in the crowd flocked over to me with an excessive display of courtesy, smiles and handshakes while I donned the mask of a politician. A mask that I was very used to. Personal wealth decreased? Yeah, you don't say. We are broke, but again, we have an investment. We're good. Hopefully that investment will pay dividends. We'll be fine. Not, not, not dividends in the technical sense. I mean, dividends and like, you know, we'll make money off of it. We'll be fine. Got a couple of reports. There's news to read as well. Young sword suspected for terror attack. It never ends. At approximately 1646, so 446 p.m. on Monday, a terror attack occurred in the Vessord city center during a rally by the left-wing CPS. The attacker, suspected to be working with Young Swords or another organization connected to them, opened fire with an automatic rifle on the protesting civilians. 17 people were killed, including the attacker who shot himself afterwards. Witnesses testified that the rifle was hidden behind a newsstand. The police have been notified of his method, and all newsstands will be targeted by the police before and during crowded rallies. Further investigations on young swords are underway. Okay, this is about the uh, the attack that we talked about before. 
Oh yes, make sure you do join the Discord if you haven't already, and make sure you let me know uh, your Discord username if it's different, so that I can assign you your, your rank and title uh, in the Discord. It's a great community, it's fantastic, all kinds of uh, good chill and, uh, and, and banter, and yes, pictures of, of Elizabeth, my, my adorable rabbit, but also others as uh, cats and dogs and rats and, 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 and snails and, and all manner of pets, but it's, it's, it's a great community. It's a wonderful community. Uh, make sure you join in if, if you want to, obviously. Uh, all right, what's going on over here? Morna industrial output concerns. The mayor of Morna has reported that their industrial output numbers this year are 12% lower than last year. They are requesting additional support to improve their industrial capacity, including machinery and personnel to combat the downwards trend. With the construction of several new factories in Morna, the mayor stated his belief that an economic upturn in the city is still possible if government investments succeed. According to the current projection, Morna is set to lose an additional 2% of industrial output next year. However, according to the local report from the municipality, an investment worth several billions of Sordish Ren will stop the downward trend and increase the industrial output in a short amount of time. Okay, interesting, interesting. When do we invade another country? I don't know if that's an option, actually. And I don't, don't, don't tell me. Uh, but I don't know if that's an option. But there is threats of us being invaded potentially by Roomberg. Uh, so, you know, that's something to think about. PFJP report on reforms. Again, the PFJP are the people we want to work with. Franz Richter, leader of the PFJP, recently outlined their demands for the reform package. He declared that without the implementation of term limits and limited decrees, it would be very difficult for him and his party to stand behind the reform package. Oh, dear. We want to make sure we win their votes, right? A limited decrees, we'll see what that's about. Term limits, we'll see what that's about. I mean, I guess I am a president, so... I suppose... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, like... Like, prime ministers... From... Off the top of my head, typically... Don't have term limits. I'm pretty sure... Canada, we do not have term limits. I can think of a couple of other places where uh, the prime minister is the actual, you know, p power. There are no term limits. Uh, anyway, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, I suppose. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, there is some news to read. Hallsword Post, protests appear calmer. Okay. As protests continue nationwide, tension eases in some cities. Still, several major cities, including Dare and Lackhaven, did have some scattered reports of violence on Monday night. Tens of thousands in Dare, Circus' hometown, walked in a memorial march. The police moved in on the thinning crowd as the evening settled, making arrests. Authorities said demonstrators began throwing rocks and ignored orders to disperse. Okay. The protests in Halsword and in most other major cities appeared calmer, with fewer clashes between civilians and police. Authorities have made at least 9,800 arrests related to the protests, according to a tally from the state press. Yikes. Shocking misogynist rally, reports the radical. Every day we are appalled by how deep the roots of misogyny goes in our country. We were appalled again when yesterday, during a protest by the Sordish League of Women, counter-protesters showed up to disrupt the peaceful rally. In the resulting scuffle between the police, the protesters, and the mob, many were arrested from both sides. Road to change is filled with real obstacles, but we said it before. We can do it. We counter <laughs> What slogans do you- I don't want to know. I'm not don't answer this question. But what kind of slogans do you- Shout at this counter protest. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Saul needs to answer for his crimes. Looking at the history of everything wrong in our country, there is only one figure that everyone points at Tarkin Saul. He has devolved our country into something much worse than what it was before. He has committed crimes against humanity. We all still remember the Azam incident and the wounds that have been inflicted on the hundreds of thousands of people with bluish ethnic background. We have been calling for his trial, and we believe it is time that his government. Oh, that this government opens the way for a fair trial by removing the undemocratic and absurd laws that protect him. It is time that the Constitution of 1929 that protects Saul be changed. People are still waiting for a fair trial, for justice to be served, and for their questions to be answered. This is something we touched on last session as well, changing the rules, uh, changing the rules so that uh, he can be tried, or at least he loses his immunity. Uh, in Greece, the president does have term limits, the prime minister doesn't. Yeah, I'm familiar with that as well in a couple of countries where the president has t term limits, but the prime minister doesn't. Uh, but yeah, I guess we're a president, so I guess going by that logic, we should be okay with term limits. Um, I'm just familiar with like Canadian politics which is in terms of like the structure and, and, and expectations and whatnot. Made a pina colada today, and now I'm here. That sounds delicious and fun. Same time as this one. Sorry, I think I missed the context of that question. 
Um, oh, oh, Crusader Kings. Uh, I'll touch on that in, in just a moment. Education privatization proven successful. Oh, the economist coming in again. Our editorial team immediately analyzed the SEPA report recently revealed to assess the standards of education. We were curious to see how the policies of the last decade have begun changing the performance metrics. Lesbia specifically stood out with a jump of six positions forward to fifth out of 68. After research and analysis collaboration with the vice president of Magnus Cartus and the SMEA chapter leader of OMEC, we gained critical insights to how Lesbia increased its education quality. It boils down to two major points. One is the privatization efforts led by Prime Minister Alvarez that led to most schools in wealthier neighborhoods, 1404 to be precise, to be privatized. This lifted a significant burden, sorry, this lifted a significant budget burden off the state because the wealthy paid for a great education for their kids and were still taxed reasonably in order to divert funds to state schools elsewhere. The second major factor was the allowance of minor curricular changes for private institutions that led to major improvements in the students' participation, teacher happiness, and boosted the performance of the institutions. All in all, the improvements to the system and the massive amounts of 34 billion lira it raised for Lesbia made it a lucrative option. Swordland desperately needs more capital to tackle the recession, and when education is privatized, foreign capital will also aid in establishing quality schools. The vice president of Magnus Cardus pointed out that the SEPA report doesn't include access to education metrics and that Lesbia has inequality problems. Thought so. The statement that has been the statement that hasn't been proven with any statistical research from the OMEC, which is why it must be taken with a pinch of salt. Hmm. The Reign administration could be practical about this term and look to the southern example on how to do positive change even though opposition from the Minister of Education is expected. Uh, I'm not surprised about this situation. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, no real, this is not real world politics, this is all, uh, fake universe politics. Um, a dictator has a black immunity, that sounds like, uh, yeah, well, a former dictator has immunity as a result of the constitution that I suppose he helped establish, right? I'm trying to remember the history correctly. But we definitely need to, uh, to, to, to adjust that. Uh, so we... We could privatize the higher school, the high schools, but maintain the poor one by state. Sounds like a good way to save some budget. Yeah, it's an interesting thing though. It's like how far, how far do the private schools run, right? Like how do they still have to follow a central uh, curriculum, right? Do they get to do their own thing? Do they get to do their own thing too much? Um, the twenty nine constitution. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I imagine I imagine you would know the uh, history like the back of your hand. Torpor games. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, the I, I, there, there's a middle ground to be had there for sure. But you got to make sure they don't run away with it. The other thing is when you have privatized education, there is the risk of salary disparity, drawing higher quality educators to the private sector, and so the public sector suffers as a result of that. Though I mean, again, in an ideal world, let's be let's be uh, let's think as as you know super optimist for a second in an ideal world yes you can take the money that you've saved and then apply it to the public schools that need that assistance and then you can you know match salaries and stuff like that but the reality often differs <laughs> often differs it's uh central directives that's indoctrination no no well you know having a centralized having a central curriculum isn't necessarily uh a, a, a nationalist or a propaganda driven curriculum but like i want to make sure for like you want to make sure for example that all the kids are learning the same kind of of all, all the kids are getting the same opportunities if 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 private schools are able to have um I'm trying to find like the best way to like phrase this as a good example, but like let, let's say in, in private schools, they're able to have better um, biology classes. For some reason, the example that came to mind. Let's say, right? But in public schools, they don't. You might start seeing a disparity in interests in the medical fields. You'll see folks that have to go to public school because of a, you know, maybe a poor education or a different curriculum or what have you, whatever it might be, they might miss out on the interest or the opportunity and then the people that are going to the private school uh they are you know kind of not directed in that way but they see the the opportunity or they 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 the interest is born into them 
because of the better quality of education. And then you end up getting this disparity of like, okay, well, all the doctors now come out of the private school. Like there's, there's a lot, it's, it's a very complex conversation, of course. Um, very complex, especially when it comes to like curriculums, especially when it comes to like, yeah, how do you balance the, the private versus the, the, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a conversation to have for sure. It's going to be a conversation in this game for sure. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, briefing on the current welfare situation, I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes part of that conversation, actually. Standards in education help poor remote areas. I exactly, yeah. Standardization like that helps. Now, just because it's standardized doesn't mean it has to be like, oh, you know, propaganda. Uh, just because it's centralized or standardized, whichever term you want to use, there's a, it, it helps ensure, it also helps ensure mobility, right? Like, just because you studied in uh, Agenland shouldn't mean that you can't move to Hall Sword and take a job over here uh, with 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 the same knowledge at the same level. You know what I mean? Am I, I hope I'm making sense. You look at the overview of policies in education. There's a good example there. Oh, is there? Uh, if I go to no education would be under welfare, I assume. Inaccessible rural education. Do you mean over here or, or elsewhere? Oh, inconsistent curriculum. Oh, oh. The differences between the certain governments have caused serious inconsistencies in the curriculum taught in Swordland. Well, what do you know? It's actually a topic of conversation. Cool. All right. Well, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, for example, let's be privatized the school in wealthy cities and kept the poor ones run by the state. Still a good idea for me. It sounds like a good idea. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what the opportunities the game presents. We also, again, we don't know. They mentioned the inequality, right? They mentioned that there is inequality. So I would like to, it'd be interesting to see if we can learn more about that before we make a decision for ourselves. Um, it'll be, it'll be definitely interesting. Uh, just, uh, religious school, for example, let's be, just trying to keep up with, which I hope this go, game goes on sale during Chinese New Year. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, yes, yeah, Steam, Steam has been doing CNY sales for a few years now, right? So maybe, maybe. Definitely a, a fun game to pick up. But yeah, there's, it's going to be interesting to see, um, the conversations up ahead, but unfortunately... We're not going to be seeing them today. I do have to call the stream over here, folks. I feel like this is a good end point. We have an important conversation coming up with regards to the welfare situation over here at Narbel, And I imagine, you know, beyond that, our highway construction project has been seeing some good progress. It's about halfway filled right now. I'm sure we're about to see some troubles and some new conversations are brewing. So uh, there's some uh, there's some interesting stuff right around the corner. We will, of course, be back with our next session live as well friday at the same time that's 10 a.m eastern but between now and then of course there are uh some other streams to come on monday at 10 a.m eastern we are back with our next crusader kings 3 let's play it's going to be a good one i've got some good plans and again that is yet 10 a.m eastern time so same time as always uh on monday on tuesday we're back at the same time again with some more phantom brigade having a lot of fun with that game so going to continue that playthrough last session was absolutely wild uh hopefully we can keep it up uh, but that'll be on Tuesday. And then again, like I said, on Friday, we'll be back continuing this story, seeing where we go. Curious to see the future. So am I, Torpor Games. Thanks for dropping by. Thank you all for joining in and for dropping by, whether you're watching live or you're watching the VOD. Again, on your way out, please don't hesitate to hit that like button to let me know if you had a good time. Leave a comment again if you're watching uh, VOD as well. Again, I do read through uh, all the comments as well. Yeah, you arrived just a little too late there, Charles. My apologies, but got to call it today so I can hop on to my uh, recordings that I got to get done today. And then hang out in the Discord in the evening. Make sure you join the Discord. Uh, link is in the description down below. And I wouldn't be surprised if it gets thrown into chat by somebody, if not by myself. But uh, it's a fantastic community. It's a wonderful place to hang out. So do not hesitate to join on in. And uh, and yeah, hang out. Natalie P coming through with a super chat to round off the stream. Huzzah! The stream wasn't la lag lagendary. Oh my god. God, I love it. <laughs> it wasn't. I was. I was gonna say it as well, but you said it better than I was gonna. Uh, that's uh, absolutely true. We had a nice, smooth stream, which is nice to see as well. Thank you, Natalie, for that super chat again. That kind of stuff really helps the channel. Really helps the streams. Keeps it all sustainable. Uh, so thank you very much. Thanks as well to our, you know, previous super chatters as well today, as well as our newest member, and of course to all of the channel members and patrons who have been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. As I always say, I appreciate it greatly. Uh, words words cannot express it. Thanks, of course, and as always as well to everyone that's been watching in live, VODs, this thing, other things, whatever it might be. Uh, it's been a great time. Uh, gr glad, to, glad to read, you know, things like great stream today, great community, great stream. That stuff makes me very happy. Makes me very happy. Thank you all for coming in. 
Torpor Games, glad you could drop by as well. So you're answering a couple questions. Only three full-time devs working on this. I'm looking forward to that 1.1 update you were talking about earlier. Very excited to see the future of this game and very excited to see the future of this genre as well, I want to say. You guys have really uh, you've done something special here and uh, and I feel like it'll it'll hopefully, I hope, it'll drive some interesting conversations as far as these kinds of games go. Folks, have yourselves a wonderful... Why did why did YouTube block Jazzy B's message? Please like and subscribe. If anything, that message should be more, you know, acceptable than... But yes, please like and subscribe. But folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know. Until next time, as always, cheers. <laughs>